everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be doing an update on some of the rescue project orchids that we've been following over the last few months. Now the first video I did was the unboxing and repotting of some of these orchids back in July, so we're kind of roughly a four month update at this point. I'm also going to be including the Cattleya violacea that I got earlier, which I will also link you to the uh, unboxing and repotting of down in the description. And this one wasn't strictly a rescue orchid, it was huge when it came to me. But unfortunately it was also planted in a cocoa husk plug and the whole root system was basically dead or what was left was damaged during the repot. So it kind of became a rescue orchid, but it's since recovered. So I wanted to include its progress in this update because I did on the last update. and I think it's quite nice to track it. So just a bit of backstory about most of the orchids I'm gonna be featuring today. They were bought as a rescue orchid project as a discounted bundle, which was around 30 pounds for the bundle of 15 rescue orchids. In that order, I also purchased separately a Cattleya deliana, which arrived with basically no roots and also kind of turned into a rescue orchid, even though it wasn't in the bundle. It was, it was full price and it was quite expensive. This is from an eBay seller that I wouldn't recommend if you don't want a rescue orchid and their prices aren't usually conducive to uh, rescues. Um, but they had this discounted bundle of back bulbs that I thought it would be really fun to have a go with and also would be great to record the progress with you guys. Um, and also just to really kind of emphasize the fact that not all rescued discounted orchids will survive and don't feel bad if they die because quite often they just don't have the energy reserves in them. But there are things that you can do obviously which we've kind of gone through over the previous videos that can help a little bit with reducing some of the stress. So I guess really I wanted to update you on those and show you the ones that have made it and also I will list down in the description the full ones that we started with because we've lost about two thirds of them at this point. So I've got about a third left. So initially they were worked out around two pounds per orchid and I think we're now at about six pounds per orchid but I'm still happy with that and I think it's really great to track their progress. So first one we're going to start off with is the Lelia harpophilia crossed with Cattleya leopoldii and at some point I've ethanoled this and it seems to have the writing seems to have come off but this one did nothing for quite a long time and then very suddenly put up a little new growth and we've actually got little new roots also in there you can see a little root tip under there so that one is recovering slowly we've got a new growth and it, the new growth has put out new roots very early into the new growth process so the fact that it's done that does definitely mean that it's well on the road to recovery because we've got new roots coming. So this one's probably going to be a few more months that it's kind of shriveled looking until this growth really matures because at this moment any energy that it does get from those new roots are going to be going into that new growth. So it won't plump the back bulb until it's finished this new growth but at that stage usually you do start to see some of the back bulb plumping if not before. So that's the Lelia harpophila crossed with Cattleya leopoldii. The next one we're going to talk about is the Cattleya genmanii variety rubra. Now this little one uh, put out a new growth and new roots, uh, which was this new growth here. But the new growth actually, the first leaves that emerged were completely folded over, which would have meant that any subsequent leaves then had difficulty emerging. So I actually cut the first set of leaves to emerge uh, off this one. Um, I don't know if it's a leaf or a sheath, but either way I cut it so that the inside leaf that was starting to emerge, you can kind of see in there, could actually make it out without any issues. This often happens with very dehydrated or stressed orchids that new growths will kind of emerge a little bit crinkled or there'll be some issue sometimes. Um, so I've done my best to mitigate that and I can see the leaf in there is starting to come out now. So that's that um, averted, that issue. You can see it's got roots coming up into the air. And one thing I'll mention with these is I did initially all pot them down lower into the pot to create a little humid microenvironment for them. I've since sort of literally picked them up and filled around with more media because it was getting to the stage where uh, they, they needed more airflow than they were getting. So that little... 
um, humidity chamber type environment worked very well while they were rootless and just starting to establish new roots and stopped any issues with the dry top layer of lacquer that I uh, sometimes had issues with before. But now that I've got this kind of pebble top layer anyway, I decided to just um, pick them up basically and put them on the top of the media and um, they can be in big orchid pots now. You can actually see a couple of root tips there. There's two just uh, starting to travel towards the side of the pot. And it's since put out a second new growth, which came directly off the first new growth from what I can remember. I've kind of buried the, uh, the rhizome a little bit on this just because I was a bit worried that those new root tips would be very sensitive to the dry top layer, um, even with the non-wicking pebble layer, which I found stops some of that uh, issues. Um, but as you can see, the roots are kind of traveling directly up as well. So it doesn't seem to be having any issues there. And the back bulbs have also plumped a little. So this was the new growth that it kind of came with when it arrived. So it's now putting out two more new growths. So that is well on the road to recovery and we've got some nice root system emerging. So that is the Cattleya Gemini variety rubra. Next up, we've got one that actually showed recovery at the earliest stages. This is the Encyclia vitellina, which has proved to be an incredibly vigorous orchid, although one that definitely wants a bit less light than I'm currently giving it. So I'm going to be moving that out of the, uh, the grow light that it's currently under because it's completely purple. This can also happen with new growths. New growths that tend to be more sensitive and more uh, readily produce anthocyanins than the older growths, and this will often fade anyway, but this is a bit too much. Um, so this is the new growth that it first put out that I updated you guys on and it put out a great root system It was kind of low down in a smaller cup So I've since I put it in a bigger cup and filled around with more media so that it's now on the top of the media It's since put out this new growth um, Which is actually the same sort of size as the last so not great progression but I'm hoping now that it's got a good root system you can see a few of the the roots in there one at the side here obviously I have recently filled around it so some there, some there but it had a very extensive root system in its little cup that it was in so it's doing incredibly well hopefully this new growth will also start some new roots soon I don't think it has yet and hopefully the subsequent new growth will start getting some size progression because we really want now that it's got a good root system for it to start producing bigger and bigger pseudo bulbs to let us know that it's quite happy and healthy but these back bulbs have also plumped so this one's been incredibly willing to recover and i definitely recommend the encyclia vitellina as a beginner friendly orchid actually because even from a couple of back bulbs it progressed so quickly it's obviously a very vigorous plant so that is the encyclia vitellina Next up, we've got the LC Jungle Eyes, which was what, again one of the ones that showed the earliest progression. It put out this little new growth, and when I last updated you, I thought it was making a really weird little deformed sheath. Uh, it turns out it wasn't. It was making a really weird little deformed leaf instead. So um, it's not supposed to be trifoliate, but these are the weird things that orchids will do when stressed. So we've got a, a three-leafed new growth there, and again, it's got... Um, great roots, it's got, this new growth has put out a good root system and I have raised again it up because I wanted more airflow around. I was getting a lot of issues with the um, not having enough airflow. I was starting to get a little bit of mold in the pot and I wasn't, wasn't a fan of that at all. So they needed to um, go into their big orchid pots. So this one, again, because it's been recently repotted, you might not be able to see many of the, the great roots that it's put out. You can see a few in there though and I'm hoping it'll put out another new growth soon and we can start getting some size progression again on uh, this new growth did its job it created a new root system for the orchid and that's fantastic and now we want some bigger new growths please next time so that's the LC Jungle Eyes again an incredibly vigorous little hybrid that seems to have not even blinked at being uh, divided and completely rootless so again I definitely think that's a beginner friendly orchid Next up, I'm just going to interject with a couple of sad stories that I think are going to go soon. This is the SLC Fire Fantasy Himaru, and it's done incredibly well to make it this far, but I mentioned in a previous video, I suspected it had no available eyes, and it does not have any available eyes. So what this means is it can never make a new growth. Potentially, maybe it could from the top of a bulb, but that's very unlikely. 
Um, there's no available eyes on the pseudobulb itself. So short of a miracle cakey coming out the top, which doesn't happen very often with cat layers. I'm sure it can happen, but I've never seen it. Um, this one is doomed and it's kind of slowly, slowly going to die. Um, as we can see from the, the fact that it started trying to draw nutrients from the one leaf it has to sustain itself. It's kind of on the road to uh, the bin, I think, unfortunately. Um, I don't like to ever say never, but I don't think that one's going to recover. Unfortunately, the same goes for the LC Christian Star Tribute. Now, this one arrived infested with scale, but was actually quite a large plant, so I really was quite hopeful. There was only one available eye that I can see in this, on this orchid, which has not done anything. It's this one here, and it's really not done anything at all. It's not rotted. One of the old bulbs has dried up and died. That's probably where this orchid has tried to draw all of the nutrients out to kind of pump into a new growth. The leaves have also died off. Again, that's a, the orchid trying to draw resources back into itself to push out a new growth and get that energy from somewhere. And I was really hoping to start seeing this little eye swelling at some point, but it just hasn't. So again, I think that that one may soon be one for the bin, which is, I will obviously keep it until they turn completely brown and I don't throw them out until there's uh, no green left in them. But yeah, just uh, it's a bit disappointing because those ones have done very well considering, but they just don't seem to have the resources or the available eyes to progress further. Next, I'm going to talk to you about the Dendrobium Starsheen Botanic Fireworks, which I believe is a Wayne Turville Australian Orchid Nursery hybrid, which I'm really into his hybrids. Not many of them make it into Europe, but I have a couple. Um, so I was up for just getting this rescue orchid haul just for this orchid to have a go with. And it put out, after months and months of doing nothing, this root from one of these older growths. I don't know which one. And that root seems to have given it enough energy to make this new growth. And this new growth, as you can see in there, is already working on some new roots. These bulbs have plumped hugely since it just put that one root down there. Um, and it's got that new growth starting. So I'm really, really happy with that. These dendrobiums seem to be very resilient. I also got the dendrobium Wayne Turville, which the uh, Australian orchid nursery owner named after himself because he felt it was that special uh, from the same seller, uh, or it was a slightly different eBay seller, but I think that they're all linked. There's three on eBay in the UK that I think potentially share uh, resources or something, because they seem to have the same sort of orchids for the same prices. Um, and I wouldn't recommend buying from them unless you're in for a rescue project orchid. But anyway, I had the Wayne Turville from one of these sellers as well, and that was a little division with no roots, and that also recovered very quickly. Um, this one's taken a lot longer, but it's recovered. So these den Australian Dendrobium hybrids seem to be extremely vigorous. So that's the Dendrobium Starsheen Botanic Fireworks. I can also see a little eye swelling in there as well, so I don't know if that's gonna do anything. I was so focused on this one, which I saw swelling, I didn't actually notice this one starting. Um, so yeah, cute little dendrobium hybrid. And I'm excited for when we can get it to recover. And then from then I'll have to winter rest it to get it to bloom, I believe. But I'm excited to see its blooms. Next up we have my non-rescue project, Rescue Orchid, which is the Cattleya Dawiana variety Rosita. And the little root poking up here saying hello. It's super, super cute. It seems to like to produce aerial roots for some reason. Most of them I managed to catch and kind of direct back down into the pot, but this one, uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna leave it. It's fine. You can have an aerial root if it wants it. So this one didn't have any roots really to start with, or they didn't look very viable. This is one of the original roots that it came with, I believe. And you can see it's branched off that. And this root does look dead, but the fact that it's branched, I think goes to show that you need to be quite careful with roots that do look dead because they are often not dead. So I'll just kind of rotate you around the pot. We've got some nice roots going down in there, you can see. And we've got more roots around this side branching off. And some of them are going right down into the reservoir there. So it's doing very well and it's recovered very quickly. 
So I would say don't be discouraged with Dawianas. Um, if this is indeed a Dawiana, but it does look like it. I did buy a second one as a backup from a Schwerter recent, I say recently, not recently, but um, just in case it isn't. But it does appear to be a Dawiana and it's recovered very quickly. So it seems to be a very easy one to recover, at least in this instance. So the last orchid I'm going to update you on is the Cattleya violacea and that is the semi-alba form. And this one I got from Spice Sotic. It wasn't really a rescue orchid as such, it was a very big, very uh, vigorous looking orchid. However, it arrived in that uh, cocoa husk plug and most of the root system didn't make it. However, it's put out a root system absolutely fantastically. Obviously, it's such a big plant. It's got lots of energy resources to draw from. So it's going to recover quicker than like small back bulb divisions. And just show you some of the roots that we've got in there. So you can see one thing I would say with the Violacea is it's um, found in nature growing, I think, right along the Amazon River. And this seems to be reflected in the fact that it absolutely adores moisture and it hates the dry top layer of Leca and semi hydro. So I was having issues with it. Um, I was having to mist down this top layer twice a day to get those new roots down into the Leca. Uh, since finding the um, non-wicking pebble top layer trick, uh, it seems to have definitely helped this orchid out because it can now get its roots kind of down into the media rather than me having to spray down all the time couple of examples of this there. We also have a dried new growth which is then pushed through green on the new growth. See there, so that has resumed growth which is quite good and you can see the nice little root down there. And it's also started another new growth here. Uh, these new growths matured since I've had it and it's just started to plump the older growths as well which were looking very shriveled so it's finally getting nutrients and resources back into the older pseudobulbs as well as the newer ones that it produced to get that root system out. Um, this is the root system that it's now got in the pot. Just rotate it around to show you. It's got a really fantastic root system now going right down into the reservoir of the semi-hydroponic container. Uh, all the roots are branching, got lots of nice new root tips. You can see another example of like where it's actually going through. This one kind of crawled along the non-wicking top layer for a while before going down in. I'm hoping that this new root tip will, will make its way down into the lacquer at some point. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this orchid has responded to putting the layer of non-wicking pebbles on the top. It seems to have really helped it. And that's something I think um, that's quite valuable information that the Cattleya violacea loves moisture, absolutely loves it uh, in my experience. So, I think we are fully recovered and hopefully the couple of new growths that it's now working on will be big enough to start maybe thinking about flower spikes next year. Um, it's a bifoliate cattleya species. I'm not sure how many times a year the violacea typically flowers. I won't hold my hopes out for anything this year but hopefully we might get something next year. So that is the cattleya violacea. And that's kind of the end of my Rescue Project Orchids update. Unfortunately, we don't have as many as we started with. I think this is inevitable when you're dealing with lots of rootless, tiny back bulb divisions. But I'm really happy with the progress that we have. And I hope that you've enjoyed kind of seeing the journey a little bit. And of course, I'll continue to keep you updated. And it'll be really interesting to see when some of these rescue babies first start to bloom. Um, that'll be a really exciting moment, proud parent moment. You'll find links down in the description to the series um, playlists and the initial unboxing of the Cattleya Violacea. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates. And I will see you guys later. Bye!